honor the 240th anniversary of the Battle of Guildford Courthouse, I would like to welcome you all to the Hoskins Farm Site. For the years prior and the generations following the American Revolution, this was a place where a colonial American family lived, worked, played, and grew. But on the morning of March 15, 1781, these grounds became the starting point for the largest battle in the Southern Campaign in America's fight for independence. A key component of colonial life, as well as for soldiers surviving on campaign, was the existence of the kitchen garden. Here, a family grew the year-round staples that kept the household fed. Now, what exactly could be found in the garden depended on the season, as crops were rotated out based on how well they could survive in the current climate. The southern colonies would have had a few earlier growing opportunities than their northern counterparts, but the number of foodstuffs available in mid-March would still have been limited, both for colonists and soldiers struggling to survive on campaign. Long-lasting stuffs could have been kept over the winter months from the last plantings of the fall in a root cellar. These goods like potatoes, onions, some salted meats, or pickled and dried veggies were stored for use over the months when the ground outside would have been too cold and hard to grow crops fresh. Another option, which would have been particularly useful in the southern colonies as winter turned to early spring, would have been to force an early round of crops to grow in hotbeds under the protection of little mini greenhouse-like covers. Using hotbeds, the ability to provide the greens and root vegetables essential for a healthy diet could be more easily maintained. During the Southern Campaign, both the British and American camps struggled to keep their armies fed. Problems with resupply and a general lack of goods meant that men on both sides were suffering from starvation and sickness. A common way to try to soften these troubles was the act of foraging. This involved scouting parties that would go out into the countryside seeking assistance from colonists in providing food, tools, horses, clothing, or anything else that the army might currently be lacking. 1781 was a hard year for this kind of practice. Goods were already scarce. The war had been taking its toll on the countryside year after year, leaving little for colonists to offer campaigning armies and even less for themselves. Unfortunately, a common side effect that accompanied these troubles was that some soldiers would disobey orders and actually loot from the colonists, stealing goods and supplies, even from those loyal to their particular cause. As the revolution moved towards Guilford Courthouse, the Hoskins family, who had actually fled from Pennsylvania at the outbreak of the war, would have been aware of the action growing close to their doorstep once again. But even still, with the increased activity along the New Garden Road, with messengers delivering orders and militia musters taking place at the courthouse, the family must still have been surprised the morning of March 15th to discover that the most formidable army in the world was preparing to set up operations in their farm fields. As a more upper middle class family, the Hoskins probably had to want for less than some of their neighbors. Their ability to also trade with the local Quaker community at New Garden would have helped to sustain the sparsely air populated area of colonists. Today, as we honor the Battle of Guilford Courthouse, we will be whipping up a simple, easy, no-bake recipe here at the Hoskins site that can be as easily enjoyed in your modern kitchen as here in our 18th century one. A common side dish that could have accompanied an 18th century dinner or supper is what would have been referred to as a small salading. Either eaten as is or dressed in salad oil, this dish of mixed greens would have been topped with available root veggies and herbs before being tossed in an optional dressing. Now for our modern palates, not being too accustomed to crunching down on plain undressed lettuces, we will be making a light vinaigrette that can be found in the popular 18th century cookbook, The Ladies, The Housewives, and The Cookmaid's Assistant by E. Taylor. Our modern adaptation comes from culinary historian Nancy Carter's book, Dining with the Washingtons. With minimal ingredients and no need of a fire, 
This easy, interactive recipe can be something that the whole family can enjoy together. Here, we have set up everything that you'll need to bring this delightful little vinaigrette together. For recipes, which were called receipts in the 1700s, they were meant to serve as a basic guide with the author under the impression that at-home cooks wouldn't need weights and measurements for they were to be universally understood or passed down through familial generations. Likewise, our original recipe gives no measurements and simply calls for the cook to bruise and mash, mix the ingredients together. Our original recipe very simply calls for the yolk of a hard boiled egg, oil, vinegar, salt, and mustard. It gives no measurements. So for help, we turn to our modern recipe by Nancy Carter. In this, she calls for the yolk of two hard boiled eggs, one fourth a teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of Dijon mustard, one fourth a cup of vinegar, and one cup olive oil. First, using a fork, we're going to mash our yolks. The original recipe says that you should be bruising the yolks with the end of a fork. But whichever method you choose, the idea is to just break the yolk up so that it is small enough that it can be easily incorporated with the other ingredients and not leave the dressing lumpy. Next, we're going to add our salt. And our mustard. Now, we will add our vinegar. And we will stir this until it's all mixed together. Lastly, using a whisk, we are going to slowly incorporate our olive oil. We want to add this last ingredient slowly, a little at a time, making sure that we whisk it into our vinegar and egg mixture so that it really gets emulsified and creates a nice smooth texture for our vinaigrette. All that's left to do is drizzle the dressing over our greens, toss, and enjoy. We have already prepared a small salading made with greens and root veggies that would have likely been available to the Hoskins family in mid-March 1781. In the bowl, we have lettuce, baby spinach, watercress, radishes, carrots, onion, and sage. Now, with the exception of maybe the onion, all of these ingredients would have had to have been forced to grow in hotbeds like we mentioned earlier. As we drizzle our dressing over our greens, remember, you can use as much or as little as you like. Any unused dressing can be stored in an airtight container in our modern refrigerators for up to three weeks. And there you have it, a simple, fun, yummy dressing that is as nice for us to enjoy as our revolutionary counterparts. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Hoskins Farm as we honor the 240th anniversary of the Battle of Guilford Courthouse. I hope you keep checking back in over the weekend for more digital content and events commemorating our anniversary.